Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. So this week I'm going to do more of my favourite products, things that I really rate and that I've used a lot and I'll give you my opinions on them and sort of a load of little mini product reviews and this time I'm going to make it an aero special. So these products are all about making you go faster, I think. So yeah, pretty cool. So I've been wearing the Giro Vanquish for a while now. I've ridden it in all different kinds of conditions. I've ridden it in hot days, cold days in the mountains, like 30 degrees. I've ridden it when it's raining, when it's cold, and perfect days today where it's about 20 degrees outside. And yeah, I've got a really good feel for how it performs. And um, it also, it feels fast when it's on as well. And we have independently aero tested it so if you've not seen that video check it out we tested it against loads of other helmets um, so we'll put a link to that and you can click on it and you can see how it performs compared to other leading helmets on the market the quick summary is that compared to the Giro Synth which is a helmet that I love and you've seen me wear countless times it's about five watts faster at 40 kilometers an hour by our calculation and then at 50 kilometers an hour which I mean our, all, all my ridings generally it's very rare that I, I dip below 50 uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking but at 50 kilometers an hour you're looking at doubling that at about 10 watts saving so it's definitely faster but I have to admit I never wear the visor. I just can't bring myself to wear the visor. If I wear the visor, I've tried wearing the visor and I just get abused. Everyone just abuse, and people think you're a triathlete. I mean, we just, I mean, that moment of what, oh, let's not even go there. In terms of comfort, it's just, it's right up there with the synth. The retention system's the same, the comfort is the same, the shape of it inside feels the same. It's really comfortable on. The biggest difference is the lack of ventilation. So, there are far fewer vents on this helmet and that helps make it more aerodynamic. But it does mean that when it's really hot, I find sort of over 25 degrees, I feel like I'm starting to cook in this helmet and I start to get really sweaty on the inside of it. Something else that I've found is that the ability for it to adequately ventilate you depends on how short or long your hair is. So right now, if I take the helmet off, I mean, I'm sort of, treading dangerously into Jedwood territory here. I mean, I, I really do need a trim. And uh, <laughs> I mean, Jesus, look at that. But um, when my hair's been shorter, I found that the venting actually works a lot better. So just something to consider. So the next thing that I'm gonna show you is Rule 28 Aero Socks. Now you may have seen me mention these before. I've given them away as a prize in a previous vlog. They're a really cool invention. It's a small company that started up, but a lot of pros and sort of people that know that they're wearing them. Uh, they're a little kind of cult thing going on with these socks at the moment. But they've been independently shown to be faster than a normal six inch sort of cotton sock. Um, the numbers that have been given are around five watts at 40 kilometers an hour versus a sort of six inch cotton sock. So. You know, that's pretty significant to the special fabric, you know, helping reduce drag around your lower leg. You know, five watts, that's about the same saving that you'd get from an aero cockpit. And it's really cost effective aero saving, really, because they only cost $24.99, um, you know, for a premium pair of socks. And considering the aero saving in a pounds per watt basis, you know, that's really economical. Obviously, they're still an expensive pair of socks at $24.99, but yeah, from a pounds per watt basis, that's pretty good. Obviously, if you're gonna go for the Rule 28 socks, you have to be into high socks. Now, they don't just come in the black that I'm wearing here, they also come in white, and sometimes they do some other funky color schemes and, and patterns as well. So you can check it out on their website, but yeah. Personally, I'm a fan. I like higher socks rather than short socks. Interestingly though, they did also test no socks when they were independently tested and no socks is actually faster than cotton socks but not as fast as uh, Rule 28 socks. So there you go. But I, I, yeah, I'd never wear no socks. That's just a crime. That's a crime, isn't it? I feel that people that wear no socks when cycling are even worse than Morris dancers. Got the uh, Pegatin name sticker on the, on the foil as well. So I mean that's that's a, worth at least like five watts, isn't it? I mean, name stick on your bike. Def I mean seven actually, I think. 
The next product I want to show you this week is my Apidura saddle pack. Now, I really love this saddle pack, okay? And when I last did a product review thing, I showed you that I was using a storage bottle on the bike, but now it's summer and I've been riding in a lot of hot places and, you know, I like to have two bottles, so now I have a saddle pack. And I also used this during the Fred Witten as well. You may have spotted it on the bike because obviously I had two bottles during the Fred Witten as well. So the first thing I like about the Apidura saddle pack is that it's kind of gray and black and yellow. So it matches the bike. And that is the most important thing. No, no, it's, it's really functional as well. So Apidura make really cool functional bags for bike packers and they've really sort of cornered that market. So you see ones that go on saddles, ones that go on the front of bars, big ones to go on the back of your bike. And they're really high quality and people love them. And a lot of the top bike packers swear by those bags. So this is actually my first Apigura bag, but the quality of it is great. It's made from a waterproof fabric and it's really hard wearing. And um, it's just a really simple, neat design. As simple as that really. I and mean, it's a saddle pack. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, let's be honest. But uh, yeah, really good quality, simple design. Nothing that can break on it or anything really. Um, strapped on really well. Waterproof fabric, as I've mentioned. And yeah can't really go wrong with this and it's just nice and small and minimal on the back of your bike because this is an aero special I need to get some aerodynamics in there now this won't make your bike more aerodynamic kind of but um, we did some aerodynamic testing recently with aero coach in Newport velodrome and we actually looked at what is the aero penalty for a saddle pack and we tried one that was double the size of this like you see some people use and it was around four watts actually so it's quite interesting probably about two watt penalty for sticking that on your bike maybe but there's plenty of room in this to fit in a couple of tubes um, and a tool probably a co2 canister as well so yeah i'll finish little bits and pieces as well but good bit of kit this and for those of you that are weight weenies it's only 40 grams yeah, that's 40 grams oh yeah proper light except when you fill it it's no longer 40 grams but still 40 grams is pretty light all right, back in the studio. Um, another piece of kit that I've been using a lot recently, which I really like, is the Pro Vibe handlebar that I've fitted to the Scott. Now, I like this for a number of reasons. It's an aero bar, and you know, having an aero cockpit on your bike is is a saving. Like, you know, it helps you go faster, and you know, the, the aero gains they all they all add up. And if you can save, you know, typically with an aero cockpit set up you're looking at around four, five, maybe even six watts um, at sort of 40, 45 kilometers an hour. So, you know, I need all the help I can get. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. Plus, I think they look cool. But, you know, if you're going to be doing long rides, it needs to be practical and, and comfortable. And I've been really impressed with the vibe at how comfortable it actually is. The top section, I, I get on with it. It's a nice shape. And the, the drop shape is nice as well and the proportions of the bar are just really really good there's also this Inegra carbon fiber that they've built into it uh, which is supposed to dampen vibrations and make the bar more comfortable now what i can say is that it does feel pretty smooth when you're on that bar um, and some bars do actually feel very chattery and very stiff when they're made from carbon so you know uh, whether or not it works or not it's hard for me to say without actually testing it properly in a lab but it's definitely a comfortable bar to use on long rides it's available in different widths so you can get 44 42 and 40s i've gone for the narrowest option which is 40s they don't do it in a 38 i would like to see in a 38 because i'd like to try going even narrower because it's more aero um but you know 40s for me i you know most bikes my size 56 i normally ride they come with a 42 so but i found going down to a 40s i have no problem with uh you know shoulders aching or anything like that and got used to it very quickly and it's faster so it's more area you you know reducing your frontal area silhouette so you know bonus but yeah i really get on with it the um the other cool thing with it is it integrates perfectly with the new jaw ace uh, di2 and ultegra di2 meaning that you can get the junction box like in the bar end stopper which is really cool because it just neatens everything up and means you don't have to have that sort of junction box hanging like a scrotum underneath your stem in the way that it does normally <laughs> or has done in the past um 
the only real criticism I have with the bar, uh, apart from the, the, the fact that I'd like to see 38s, and again, it's a minor one, is that I think it could be designed a little bit better for when you set it up and when you route the cables through. Some of the way that the holes are angled isn't optimal for sort of getting the cable round an awkward bend and things like that. And I just think angling the cable, the cable holes a bit better. It's hard for me to describe, but if you ever set one up, you'll, you'll get it and you'll know what I mean. But again, it's a moot point because, you know, you're only gonna do that once. And most of you probably won't even do it. You'd probably just take it to a shop and get them to do it. So yeah, it's not, um, not that I'm saying you're all terrible mechanics, it's just that's what most people do. Oh, the other thing I should point about a ProVibe is it weighs 240 grams in my size as well, which is pretty good. Um, there are, you know, lighter bars. When you go for a full lightweight bar, you're saving another sort of 50 grams on top of that usually. Uh, but Aero counts for more than 50 grams. So that's what all the, the people tell me, all the experts. So go in Aero. The next bit of kit I've got to show you that I really rate, that I've been using a lot recently, um, is this. Which I picked up from Ann Summers. No, I didn't really. <laughs> Although it does kind of look a bit like it. It's um, Endura's Aero Suit, the new one that came out. So you may have seen we did a video on their new skin suit, the new encapsulator suit to test if it is actually as fast as Endura claims. So if you haven't seen that, check that video out. But it's a really cool piece of tech and that, that skin suit is rapid. I mean, the amount of R&D that's gone into it is really impressive and it's all from uh, ex-Formula One aerodynamics guru, Simon Smart. But it's cool to see a product that backs up the marketing claims that is really fast. And this is the road version. So the road version has shorter sleeves, um, and it also has pockets on the back and a slightly different cut for riding on a road rather than in a TT position. And it's also optimized to be most aerodynamic at a slightly lower speed range than the TT suit because typically on the road, on a road bike, you're gonna be riding at slightly lower speeds than on a TT bike. So there's that cleverly done as well. Now the main thing that I think about when reviewing products, and I've spoken about this before, is zero distraction. Now that is, when you're using it, you shouldn't notice anything's going wrong. You shouldn't notice anything with the product. If something, if you're noticing like the chamois pad, then it's not comfortable enough. You should just be able to forget it's there. You know, you shouldn't notice little bits rubbing or causing you distraction. That means it's not doing its job optimally um, in an ergonomic sense. Now, when judging the Endura Road Suit in that regard, it performs really well, particularly comfortable. Like, you know, particularly with regards to comfort. The chamois pad is great, you know, and I use this in Fred Witten, where I'm convinced that it definitely saved me some time with how aerodynamic it is, but also it was really comfortable as well. So the chamois great, you know, and I didn't feel I was having to get out the saddle at any point to sort of give myself a bit of family jewel relief. Um, <laughs> Cause yeah, it's a really comfortable pair of shorts built into this road suit, so that's great. The only issue I've got with it is we've got with regards to the pockets. Um, this is only a slight issue, but still, I did get a bit of distraction here. So I do feel the pockets would be better if they were just a little bit bigger. They've obviously been kept small to help with aerodynamics because if you've got a big sack on your back full of stuff, it's less aerodynamic. And also there's a flap covering the pockets, which Endura has put there deliberately to help smooth the airflow over the pockets and the contents of your pockets. But having a flap there does slightly impede pocket access. So I, I get that it's a trade-off. I don't know, I'd like to see the, the difference in power created, by, the difference in drag between having the flap and not having the flap, and then maybe decide on there whether or not I want the flap or not. But yeah, to be, just to be aware of it does impede your pocket access a bit. So the Endura Road Suit is a great item. I really rate it. If you're doing an event, uh, particularly a, you know, if you're into racing or sportive or a Grand Fondo and you're really chasing a time and you want to make an aerodynamic saving, this is probably the best sort of pounds per watt saving you can make as a piece of clothing like this. Um, but that said, it is fairly expensive. It's 329.99, but it's a premium piece of kit and there's a huge amount of R&D that's gone into designing this and making it actually faster than other clothing that you can wear. 
Now also, it's worth considering that if you were to buy separately a pair of Endure, um, like Rafa Pro Team shorts and a Rafa Pro Team Aero jersey, which I'm willing to bet would not be as aerodynamic and as fast as this, that would actually cost more than 329.99 if you go off the, the RRP. I think it'd be about 20 pounds more. So, you know, it is expensive, but it's definitely better pounds per watt saving than if you were buying some wheels or a new bike frame and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really good. I mean, to give some sort of numbers that Endura are claiming, they reckon that it's worth around 80 seconds over um, 40 kilometers versus a standard sort of jersey and bibs. So, you know, I, I would believe that as well, having used it. It feels tangibly fast when you wear it and it's just a great piece of kit. A few people for a while have been asking me to review the DT Swiss wheels that I've been riding a lot. Now I used these on uh, Fred Witten as well and I used them on a number of other things. I've been just, yeah, I love these wheels. So they are DT Swiss ARC uh, 1100 die cuts and they're a wheel that is designed for, yeah, all round use and racing and that sort of thing. So they have a 17 mil uh, internal rim width and they're tubeless ready and they also contain sink ceramic bearings and they're built around the excellent DT Swiss 240 hubs. But there's loads of really cool features that DT Swiss has put into the design of these wheels and they were designed in collaboration with Swiss side as well, who are aerodynamics gurus with Formula One background as well. So. Um, yeah, they're really cool. So they're optimized for 23 and 25 millimeter tires. I generally run them with 25s in and I've been using them tubeless as well. And if you want to use a wider tire like a 28 and DT actually has a specific wheel for that, that's called the ERC 1100. So this is the ARC 1100. So it's, that's the ERC has got a 19 mil rim width uh, internal and this one has 17. So it's designed to be deliberately narrower because that's a little bit more aerodynamic when you're going sort of 45 uh, kilometers an hour, that sort of thing. So something else that's cool is other little aerodynamic details and that comes from DT Swiss's approach. So they've actually looked at something called rotational drag, which is the drag created from inside the wheel spinning. So by the spokes and things like that. A lot of wheel design in the past from other brands uh, has typically involved just looking at the rim shape and the airflow coming straight on at the rim, but not the airflow within the wheel itself. And obviously the spokes slicing through the air as the wheel turns round, you know, that's like turning a spoon through um, a big bowl of water. You know, you're still moving an object through a medium. So it uh, does create drag. The other thing they've done is they've hidden the nipples from the spokes inside the carbon rim. Apparently that accounts for half a watt at 45k an hour. Don't know, it all adds up, doesn't it? I mean, I'm, I've saved about 100 watts using all this kit. Um, <laughs> I'll be winning the Tour de France if it all goes to plan. Um, if you're gonna go for a, uh, the DT Swiss uh, ARC 1100 wheel set, they're generally around about 2000 pounds for the pair. If you get, so they're right up there, top end premium wheel set, but for my money, I would probably go with those over Zips or uh, Envies and those sort of things. I think the build quality is brilliant. They feel really fast and they're just ticking a lot of boxes and I've been really, really impressed with them. I also love the 240 hubs because they're really easy to service at home and you can service them without tools. So that's really cool. If you've never seen that, you sort of YouTube it, Google it. There are videos out there where you can see how to service a 240 free hub. Even if you have no mechanical uh, nous or training at all, it's really easy to do. So it's good for the home mechanic. So onto the bit you've all been waiting for, competition time. So last week's competition was oh, amazing competition. I think it's probably the best competition we've ever had. Um, to win three nights stay with uh, Le Closier um, in the Pyrenees. So lots of good entries, but I've decided to go with F-Man Nottingham, who writes the summer of 1989. I mean, that's, Great start to any story, really. Um, <laughs> just finished school for the six weeks holiday. Went out on my rally road bike trying to emulate my hero, Pedro Delgado. When riding flat out down a hill, I saw my front wheel quick release spinning around. Do I break and have a leisure crash or try and reach down and hold it, then break? 
I tried the latter, but as I leant forward, <laughs> off popped the front wheel, causing a poor 13-year-old to cartwheel down the road. My Sony Walkman exploding it. I mean, that would have been like, like a really expensive iPod back then. I mean, <laughs> 1989. My Sony Walkman exploding into pieces along the way. Fortunately, I broke my fall with my face. Imagine my mum's horror as my mate helped me back to my house, both carrying bits of my bike and myself being a bloody mess. I lost both my front teeth, broken nose and cheekbone amongst sprains, dislocations and the best of all, six weeks in hospital. And I was released the day before going back to school. <laughs> that sounds horrific for a kid. <laughs> This led to my parents buying some futuristic invention called a helmet, which was unheard of back in the day. I will always look, I will always look back fondly on that summer. <laughs> that sounds like, for a kid, that's the worst, the worst thing that can happen. Like, start of the summer holidays, <laughs> end up in hospital. Last day of the summer holidays, get released from hospital. <laughs> and you broke your Walkman. Well, thanks for that story. It's good, F-Man from Nottingham. And uh, I'd love to know what road you did that on, because uh, I used to live in Nottingham, so that would be quite interesting. But uh, yeah, thanks for that story. Um, sounds horrific, but it's also quite amusing. And I love the 80s cultural references in there as well. <laughs> but yeah, you've won the prize. So simply get in contact with uh, your email address and the email address in the description below, and we'll put you in contact with Le Closier, and then you can go from there about organising a trip. So good luck, and uh, hope you really enjoy it. So, this week's competition. Well, unfortunately this week there isn't a competition because this is my last vlog um, for Cycling Weekly. So I'm leaving Cycling Weekly, but don't worry, I'm not dying. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, because I'm leaving, you know, it's um, how much of a privilege it's been working for what is the oldest cycling magazine in the world. People often forget that, that it's the oldest mag in the world, but there's a lot of heritage there. Um, and there's also a lot of you know very talented and creative people who work at Cycling Weekly and it's just been great to work in that environment doing something that I'm really passionate about that I really enjoy and also massive thanks to you guys uh, the viewers as well because without you then this wouldn't exist you know we wouldn't do any of this sort of content and I love the relationship that you have on YouTube with the viewers that people can actually comment and say what they like and say maybe what they don't like about a video and that gives you the chance to make things better um, as well. So yeah, thanks a lot for all your viewers and all your comments and everything. It's been, it's been great reading them and uh, thanks a lot for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, as for where I'm going, I can't say at the moment, but rest assured I will be popping up somewhere soon. So stay tuned for that. But if I don't see you, Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. See you later. Just to be clear, that was a Truman Show reference. Yeah, the truth is, I'm going to prison. It was only gonna be a matter of time until the white stem police finally caught up with me. But it was good while it lasted. Right. All good things must come to an end, I guess. Now I must face the consequences of my actions. Oh, bloody hell. Cars. Right, you can cut there. Cars. Game on. Okay, little Wayne's World reference for you there.